Welcome to Math 1300, Nunez Community College. Today's video is on section 6.1. 6.1 is known as a system of equations. A system of equations because we have more than one variable. If I have x plus y equals a number, suppose it's 5, there is no limit to the amount of answers that would be correct. Someone might pick five for X and zero for Y. Someone might pick one for X and four for Y, or zero for X and five for Y, all of which are true. However, when we're trying to solve, we need to know that X equals a specific number, like three, X equals a specific number, or Y equals a specific number. So we've developed a way of solving for a system of equations, otherwise known as two equations with two unknowns. Suppose I have 3x plus y equals 1 and negative x plus 2y equals 9. Negative x plus 2y equals 9. This is what we have to have in order to solve it. Two unknowns, but two different equations. Two different equations. The first method we're going to look at is going to be called the substitution method. In the substitution method, we're going to substitute something in. So we're going to take one of the equations that has a single variable. I'll take the first one, and we want to solve it for y. So we want to have y by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I can rewrite this as y equals negative 3x plus 1 by bringing the 3x to the other side of the equation. Now y equals this, negative 3x plus 1. So what I want to do now is go to the other equation, and wherever I have a y, I'm going to plug in 3x negative 3x plus 1. So that I now can take this equation, bring it down here, and I got negative x plus 2 times instead of y, I'm going to multiply by what y is, which is negative 3x plus 1 equals 9. And what I do is I now have only one variable. It's the variable x. Instead of having two variables, x's and y's. So now I can solve by distributing negative x minus 6x plus 2 equals 9 to give me negative 7x plus 2 equals 9, negative 7x equals 7 when I subtract 2 from both sides, and then I divide by negative 7 and x equals negative 1. So we know what x is now. x is negative 1 by using the substitution method. We now need to find out the value of y. In order to do that, since I know that x is 1, I'm going to plug negative 1. Sorry, I'm going to plug negative 1 in for x here and solve. Plug negative 1 in for x here and solve. Or plug negative 1 in here and solve. This one looks like the easiest one to use. So we'll find out that y is equal to negative 3 times negative 1 plus 1 by plugging the negative 1 in for x. That gives me a positive 3 plus 1, y equals 4. y equals 4. So we know that x equals negative 1 and y equals 4. That would be solving for the linear equation using the substitution method. Now, a lot of times the substitution method is going to be the easiest method. If I have a single variable, I can then bring everything else away from it and substitute it in. But the substitution method is not the only method that we can use. We could use a graphing method. A graphing method because both of these are linear equations, which means they make lines. Well, wherever the two lines cross is going to be my x and my y value. So I could graph them. However, if we have answers that are too big to fit on a graph that we can see, then it gets kind of hard. If your answers are 7 comma negative 52, it might be kind of hard to fit that on the screen. 
So there's another method called the elimination method. In the elimination method, we try to get rid of one of the variables. So if we have this, 3x plus 2y equals 8, and 2x minus 5y equals 18, 2x minus 5y equals 18, I could use the elimination method. So the elimination method means we're going to get rid of something. I would like to get rid of the x, but I don't see what I can do here. Or I would like to get rid of the y. I'm going to get rid of the y because I see that this y is positive and this y is negative. A positive y and a negative y would cancel out if they were the same. How can we make them the same? Well, I'm going to take the top equation and I'm going to multiply it by a 5. I'm going to take the bottom equation, I'm going to multiply it by a 2. If I do that, I'm going to have a plus 10y on the top and a minus 10y on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to multiply the top equation by 5. So it'll be 5 times 3x plus 5 times 2y equals 5 times 8. So I'm multiplying by 5 to the whole equation, not to change the actual equation. And I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 2. So it'll be 2 times 2x minus 2 times 5y equals 2 times 18. That'll leave me with Again, coming down, 5 times 3 would be 15x plus 10y equals 40. And on the bottom, I'll have 4x minus 10y equals 36. I would then draw my line and combine them. Combine them meaning combine them. Going down, 15x and 4x would be 19x. And then we have plus 10y and minus 10y. Plus 10y and minus 10y is going to give me 0. And then we have 40 and 36, which is going to be 76. Now I have a single variable. 19x equals 76. If I divide by 19, I would come up that x would be equal to 4. x would be equal to 4. Again, giving me the value of x. Now, once I have that, I'm going to plug the x into one of the equations and solve for y. In this one here, I guess we'll go ahead and plug it into the equation here. I'll have what? 2 times 4, because 4 is x, minus 5y equals 18. Giving me what? 8 minus 5y equals 18. Bring the 8 to the other side, subtracting it, negative 5y equals 10, and divide by negative 5y equals 2. So in this case, we have x equals 4 and y equals 2. This is known as the elimination method. Again, I'm multiplying by what I have to to get the top and the bottom as opposites so that they go away so that they go away. In the third example, we now have three unknowns. So we're gonna have an X, a Y, and a Z. In order to solve this, we need to have three equations. Three equations with three unknowns. So what we have here is going to be X plus 2Y plus Z equals 8. equals 8. Uh, we have 2x plus y minus z equals 1. 2x plus y minus z equals 1. And then finally we have x plus y minus 2z. x plus y minus 2z equals negative 3. So we got equation 1 equation 
2 and equation 3. The three different equations. By looking at it, it looks kind of intimidating. But what we want to do here is we want to pick one equation to use to combine with the other two. One equation to use to combine with the other two. And when we're doing that, we're trying to get rid of one of the variables. If I'm looking at what we have here, I have a plus z and a minus z, so I know I can take a z out if I use the first two equations. And I have a plus z and a minus 2z, so I could probably do something with these two equations and take the z out. So what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a new equation combining the first two, and then I'm going to make a new equation combining the first and the third. But I'm going to use the first with both of them. I'm going to use the first with both of them. So if I write the first two, if I write the first two, it's going to be x plus 2y plus z equals 8, and 2x plus y minus z equals 1. So I wrote the first two right here, and we're going to combine them. I don't even actually have to multiply by anything because I have a plus z and a minus z. So the z's will go away if I combine them. This will be 3x plus 3y equals 9. 2x and x, 2y and y, 8 and 1. This is my new equation that I get from combining equations 1 and 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I'm going to combine equations 1 and 3. So I'll rewrite 1 over here. That gives me x plus 2y plus z equals 8. And x plus y minus 2z equals negative 3. Now, since I got rid of the z's by combining number 1 and 2, I'm going to have to get rid of the z's again. Whatever variable I decide to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of the same variable because when I come up with a new equation, I'll be able to combine the two new equations to solve for the x's and the y's. So for this one here, I need to make this a 2z so that a 2z and a negative 2z goes away. So I guess I need to rewrite the equations again. So I need to multiply this by 2. 2 times x plus 2 times 2y plus 2 times z equals 2 times 8. So I just rewrote the top equation by multiplying the whole thing by 2. That gives me 2x plus 4y plus 2z equals 16. I just multiplied the two by each thing. This is the equation I have now. Now I'm going to bring this one back down so I can combine these two. I have x plus y minus 2z equals negative 3. Now when I combine them, the negative 2z and the positive 2z go away leaving me with 3x plus 5y equals 13. So now the two equations that I'm going to use is the one that I found first with equations 1 and 2 combined, and I'm going to do the one I just found, which was equation number 1 and 3 combined. So now I have what? 3x plus 3y equals 9, and 3x plus 5y equals 13. So now we run back into the system of equations we had when we did the first one. The first two, actually. So we need to decide, are we going to use the substitution method? Or are we going to use the elimination method? So for this one here, I guess I'm going to multiply this one by a negative 1. Because that way the 3x and the negative 3x are going to cancel out. The 3x and negative 3x will cancel out. So I'm going to multiply this by negative 1, which will give me negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 9. If I multiply this by negative 1, I'll bring this one down without changing it. And now I'm going to combine these two. The 3x and negative 3x is going to go away, leaving me with 2y equals 4. 
And now I can divide by 2, and I'll solve for y. y equals 2. I now know what one of the three variables is uh, equivalent to. Now I'm going to go back in and plug y into one of these in order to solve for x. So let's do this one. So that'll give me 3x plus 3 times 2 equals 9, or 3x plus 6 equals 9, 3x equals 3, divide by 3, x equals 1. So we now know that y equals 2, x equals 1. Now I can plug these two into any of these three equations and solve for z. I'll take the top one, it doesn't matter. So that would give me one, one plus two times y, y is two plus z equals eight. So two times two is four, four plus one is five, giving me five plus z equals eight. Bring the five across and z equals 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. So now we've solved for all three variables. So we have x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3. This is how we solve for three equations with three unknowns. This has been 6.1 linear equations. See you at the next one.